Literacy, science, ICT and maths lend themselves to the creative curriculum. The children learn through a sense of discovery that these subjects can be fun and engaging whilst meeting the national curriculum objectives. This lesson came about because the children were already enthusiastic about the natural world and we wanted to bring some of this enthusiasm into the classroom. Welcome to Base Camp. This is where you're going to be spending most of your morning. The aim of this lesson is to give children an understanding of their natural environment and to challenge many of the stereotypes of what we mean by the term scientist. OK, scientists, your job is to go outside and to bring back different species of plant and animal to base camp. In base camp, you're going to be identifying those animals, OK? And you're also going to be taking measurements, using microscopes, making observational drawings and finding out as many facts as you can about those animals to produce a fact file on them. You're going to get given a folder for your group and in your file you will see a card and it says the challenge at the top of it. I want you to take the card out and I want you to read your card out with your group. Okay, what does your challenge card say? It's not, yeah, yeah. it's not always a good time to find it. Um, to use books and computers to identify the plant or creature. Yes, I'm doing the animal. I'm doing the animal. The children are divided into eight groups. Some go out to collect specimens of plants and animals from the school grounds, while other members of their group remain in the hall to record their findings. We're going to have to find some creatures quite quickly because these guys in here are going to be wanting to get started on identifying them. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Let's do it then. Okay. Yeah. The school grounds offer an excellent free resource. They can be used at any time of the year as long as the children come prepared with the correct clothing. Long grass is really, really good for wildlife and wildflowers. And I bet if you went into this long grass here, you'd find some really, really interesting species of plants and animals. You don't have to be a science specialist to teach this lesson. Half the fun is discovering with the children. Where's eggs? Are they white like eggs? Yeah, look at that. Yeah, pick one up. Oh, hang on, what's that there? Good life, get it, Ross. Oh, good life. <laughs> you got it? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. Have you got your temperature of that? No. Strap it in. Look at that. There, these are really strange. I've never seen anything yeah. like that before. It had like bottom foot. Do you need all of them? What is that? No. No, how many would you need? One. Okay, there you are then. We took it back to this. It doesn't work it. Oh, he's trying to climb out. <laughs> There. Oh, it's no, good. It just what was it? 11 degrees. 10.8. He's getting colder. Yeah. yeah. No, he's 11, 11 now. Point, 11 now. Right, to the pond. 11 A really good way yeah. to get a close-up view of the pond is to lie down on here so you're safe and then have a really good look at what you can see inside and get the probes <laughs> in as well. I say, come here. Yeah. I got it. Got it. You've got a fish in the pond. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, it's alive. Wow. It's alive, yeah. It's got a fish. Oh, it's really about that big fish. Oh, Here's the fish. That is probably the coolest thing I've seen I've ever actually ever seen. This lesson taps into children's interest in the natural world and they have a better appreciation of scientific methods and data logging. By using the creative curriculum, science becomes both interesting and accessible for all ability groups. Off you go then. Once the children have collected their specimens, they hand them over to other members of their group who log and analyse their findings using microscopes, information sheets and the internet. Some children make observational drawings of their findings, whilst others upload their photos onto the computer. That's a good picture, Lil. If you do it on the side where, where with the magnifying glass, you get like a really good close-up. Um, non Yeah. So like sea pay for ten cents. As a fish got found out. As a snail got back thing. A slug. Here. Yeah. As a snail. Um, yeah. Yeah. You look on, look on the sheet. So it's this one. Love it. This is a great topic to do early in the year with year six because you haven't yet started your SATS revision 
and you can revisit the topic in the summer term and notice the changes. It's because we wanted you to learn about the things that you were interested in. We wanted you to learn like real scientists learn, okay, by actually going out and doing things. Who's enjoyed doing We thought this? that this lesson would give us a great opportunity to challenge the stereotypes that children hold about scientists. We're trying to teach them that scientists don't have to work in a laboratory. Well, before I thought a scientist was always wore like a white coat and big glasses and stuff. But now I know they don't just wear that, they wear all different kinds of things because they don't need big glasses and stuff just for nature. Now, I just think scientists are like normal people and um, they, they discover like different species of animal and stuff. OK, so if you just go and sit along the edges there, find a chair. Prior to this lesson, the children have been outside and collected different specimens of plants and animals. Now, I want them to use a data logging programme to collate the information they have found. And you are going to be making a database today all about the species and the plants and the animals that you discovered this morning. This will be the first time that the children have used this particular data logging programme. So I've produced a card which asks them certain key questions to guide their thinking. Habitat, what does the word habitat mean? Yes, Amelia. Um, it's where it lives or where you found it. Good girl, where it lives or where you found it. Good. OK, so we're going to go back to our computers and you're going to input all the data for all of the animals and plants that you collected. Once you've done that, I'm going to come back to the computer with you and I'm going to teach you how to put a picture in. And once you've done that, then I'm going to teach you how to make tables and charts so that we can analyse your findings, OK? Yeah? Good. I'm encouraging the children to work in pairs so that they can work through problems together. So you're going to click on one species information and you're going to click on two species information. Yeah. Habitat, you, you type dark places. The data cards will encourage the children to use the appropriate vocabulary when classifying their plants and animals. The children will have used DigiBlues and digital cameras to capture images of the animals that they find. We can incorporate these into their data logging. If we wanted to tell somebody in the school about our findings, because we wanted them to help us make our grounds even better for living things, living plants, living creatures. Who might we report our findings to? Who could we tell that might help us? Yasmin. Um, like the school governors or something. Good, we could go to the school governors. What you're going to now be doing over the next couple of weeks is you're going to be making a PowerPoint presentation you're going to include all of your findings and all of your information and you're going to work in your groups and you're going to make a presentation that you're going to show to the governing body of this school and we're going to see if we can get some help to improve our environment. The topic of biography can seem a little dull okay. but by using a poem and a poet as a starting point you can give the children a meaningful context for their learning. We're going to look at one of his poems and we're going to be performing one of his poems, OK? Can you remember where he was born? Where was he born? By using a poet that the children are not familiar with, we are trying to broaden their experiences of literature. Now, I'm going to give you out the poem, or part of the poem. It's an extract. It's the first stanza, which is another word for verse, OK? The first line of the stanza says, This is the night mail crossing the border, bringing the check... And the post. I hope through taking part in this lesson, the children will gain a greater understanding of the work of W.H. Auden and also look forward to writing his biography. Pulling up Betok, a steady climb, the gradients against her, but she's on time. What do you think that means? Jordan? Is it a hill and, um, and it says, but she's on time? Could it be because she's going slow up the hill? Fantastic. Because of the friction. Oh, very good, Jordan. That's exactly what Betok is. It's actually a mountain in the lowlands of Scotland. By introducing a performance element to the poem, we teach children about rhythm, 
cadence, texture and assonance. What we're going to do is we're going to discover that there is a train hidden in this poem. We have to be a bit brave with it and we're going to have to make some noise when we do it. OK, so I'm going to stand you up and I'm going to put you in groups. Gather in a little group, so anyone that's in Willow. When we think of a steam train, we make that... Right, we're going to use that noise, OK? We're going to find the steam train in this poem, OK? So... The first thing I want you to do is to just repeat after me this rhythm, okay? And it goes like this. This is a nightmare, this is a nightmare, this is a nightmare. Should we try? Yeah. Ready? <clears throat> this is a nightmare, this is a nightmare, this is a nightmare, this is a nightmare, this is a nightmare. I find by splitting the children into small groups, it gives all of the children a chance to take part, but it also gives one of them a chance to lead. Who's going to be the driver? Sophie. So you're in charge and we've all got to be looking at Sophie to help us. Right. Any lines that you think you might like to use? Um, snorting always the ash I'm doing letters for the rich, letters for the poor. Letters for the rich, letters for the poor. That's going to be difficult. It's a bit of a tongue twister. OK, driver, off you go. This is a nightmare, this is a nightmare, this is a nightmare, this is a nightmare. Less for the rich, less for the poor, less for the rich, less for the poor. Where is the check for the postal? Snorting noisily as she passes, snorting noisily as she passes. Wonderful. Fantastic, fantastic. OK, folks, come and sit down on the carpet in your groups, please. What we're going to do is we're going to now listen to some people's performances, OK? Peer assessment is an instant way for children to evaluate their learning and gives the teacher time to reflect. This is the nightmare, 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 so what's that called? What, was, what did they get wrong in that piece? The rhythm. Good girl, they got the rhythm wrong. So Alex, you're going to really need to try and drive that train and keep that steady beat. OK? Well done. OK? So what clues do we get about W.H. Auden, where he lives or maybe the times that he was living in, by the poetry he was writing? Sophie? Well, he's talking about a steam train and they're not around anymore, so it would have been when they were around, which was quite a long time ago. And he must have lived in the country because he's talking about a farm. Good, excellent. So we can learn a little bit about maybe the places that he was born in and the people that he knew and the ways that he travelled by the poetry that he writes, OK? So tomorrow, should we do some more biography writing? Yeah. We'll see if we can put a little bit of his poetry into our biography, OK? Good. Right. We hope that by using the creative Thank curriculum, you. the children will feel that they have a stake in their learning and that their learning will be an enjoyable and fulfilling experience. Mm -hmm.